Good evening. My name is Cameron Ingram, Executive Director with the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Welcome to the 2022 North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission Annual Rules Cycle Public Hearing for Fishing, Hunting, Trapping, Game Lands, and Other Regulated Activities Proposals. Speaking on behalf of staff of the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission and the agency's 19 member board of commissioners, I would like to extend my gratitude to you for taking part in this virtual public hearing. In light of the pandemic, we once again had to shift away from in-person hearings for our annual rules cycle to this virtual format, and we appreciate your adaptability. The Wildlife Commission is a state regulatory agency responsible for enforcement of fishing, hunting, trapping, and boating laws, and provides programs and opportunities for wildlife-related educational, recreational, and sporting activities. The North Carolina General Assembly declares through state statutes which matters of fish, wildlife, and land management the Wildlife Commission can regulate through its rules. Before we begin the hearing, I want to emphasize how essential your active participation in this rulemaking process is. The Wildlife Commission considers all comments the same, whether they are submitted verbally during this virtual hearing or submitted by mail, email, or through the online comment portal at NorthCarolinaWildlife.org. Each of you participating tonight, help us understand your needs, concerns, and ideas as they pertain to these proposed rules. Staff compile all comments into a document that the commissioners review before deciding whether to adopt, amend, or reject the proposals. Thanks again for participating in this important process. The commission appreciates your interest in the state's wildlife resources and respectfully considers all suggestions within its authority. At this point, I'm going to introduce the staff that will be presenting tonight in the order they'll be speaking, and then we'll go ahead and get started. First, we have Ashley Peckerel, Regulatory Analyst. Next will be Christian Waters, Chief of Inland Fisheries Division. Then we'll have Brad Howard, Chief of Wildlife Management Division, followed by Brian McRae, Chief of Land and Water Access Division. And lastly, Darren Barnes, the program manager of the Wildlife Interactions and Regulated Activities Permits Office. Thank you, Director Ingram. Before we get started, please be aware that we are accepting public comments through January 31st. Comments can be submitted online through our public comment portal, via email, or in writing. And all of this information can be found on our website at ncwildlife.org slash proposed regulations. We will also be holding a virtual public hearing on January 20th at 7 p.m. and we will accept verbal comments at that time. To register for the hearing, please visit our website. Good evening. I'm Christian Waters, Chief of the Inland Fisheries Division for the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. This evening I will be presenting the inland fishing proposals. We have six proposals total. Five deal with trout in our mountain region and one deals with striped bass. For our first trout proposal, F1, it will clarify the boundaries of catch and release artificial flies and lures only trout waters on the Tuckasegee River in Jackson County. The proposal will not add or remove any public mountain trout waters. F2 reclassifies the following waters from wild trout waters natural bait to wild trout waters. Of North Shoal Creek in Cherokee County, Deep Creek in Graham County, the game lands portion of Lower Fowler Creek in Jackson County, the game lands portion of Jarrett Creek in Macon County, and the game lands portion of Overflow Creek in Macon County. F3 will modify the lower boundary of hatchery supported trout waters on Spring Creek in Madison County. The proposed reach will be from the junction of NC 209 and NC 63 to the confluence of Meadow Fork. The proposal will remove 0.9 miles from public mountain trout waters. F4 will modify the upper boundary of delayed harvest trout waters on Hilton Creek in Ash County. The proposed reach will be from 900 yards upstream of State Road 1372 Bridge to the North Fork New River. This proposal will add approximately 0.5 miles to public mountain trout waters. 
F5 will modify the upper boundary of hatchery supported trout waters on the Limble River in Avery County. The proposed reach will be from State Road 1504 to the Blue Ridge Parkway boundary line, except where posted against trespassing. This change will remove approximately 0.5 miles of public mountain trout waters. Our final proposal is for striped bass. F6 will increase the minimum size limit for striped bass and its hybrids from 16 inches to 20 inches in Lake Norman. The daily creel limit will remain four fish in combination. And that concludes our inland fishing proposals. Good evening. I'm Brad Howard, Wildlife Management Division Chief, and I'm going to be presenting the wildlife management proposals. We have eight proposals to present for you tonight. The first proposal, H1, is a migratory game bird proposal. Uh, this proposal has three parts. The first part, it allows crippled waterfowl to be taken from a motorboat under power in those areas described, delineated, and designated as special sea duct areas. Uh, the purpose of this change is to make us uh, consistent with the new federal rules. Uh, the second part is to eliminate the habitat enhancement program that established posted waterfowl management areas by the WRC for Canada goose and duck restoration. Those no longer exist, so there's no purpose for them being in rule. And the third part is to remove the word experimental from the September teal seasons as the season is no longer experimental. It is established and has been for a while. Wildlife proposal number two, H2, is concerning exotic species. It will add the tegu lizard and greenhouse tree frog uh, as exotic species that are unlawful to possess, import, sell, release, etc. into North Carolina. Proposal H3 uh, deals with the collection, possession, and commercial take primarily of reptiles and amphibians. Um, this will modify the current uh, pos possession of four reptiles and 24 uh, amphibians and change it from no more than four reptile species and 24 amphibian species per physical address. Uh, it'll also make some changes to the collection license regarding snapping turtles. It will add certain requirements for snapping turtles and create a collection license specifically for snapping turtles. The season for collecting snapping turtles will be from June 1st through September 30th. Uh, individuals can collect no more than 10 turtles per physical address per day and no more than 100 snapping turtles per physical address per season. There will be a 13 inch size limit and certain specifications around the trapping devices and limits the snapping turtle collection license to North Carolina residents only. Additionally, it separates and defines scientific collection permits, educational collection permits, and snapping turtle collection permits. It clarifies that those licenses may not be transferred, and, and it aligns the possession permits with four, the 424 rules, and it aligns the 13-inch size limit rules. The fourth proposal also involves importation of, and native reptiles and amphibians, and it adds reptiles and amphibians to the list of animals prohibited to import without a permit from the WRC. This just makes the importation of native reptile and amphibian species consistent with birds and mammals across the state. It also removes language regarding servant importation because those rules are now in the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services rules. The next proposal, H5, is a deer proposal. It removes the Western black powder either sex restriction line from rule and links the black powder either sex restri restrictions to the, for a county to the corresponding either sex gun seasons for that county. For example, if a county has no either sex gun day in their regular firearm season, then the either sex season for the black powder season would be the first Saturday of the black powder season. Uh, conversely, if that county has the conservative either sex season, then all open days of the black powder season would be either sex. That's the same for the moderate and the maximum. The introductory season is, is the big change here, where if a county has uh, the introductory either sex season, then their season would be the opening day through the following Saturday of black, black powder season. So it would add some either sex hunting in those counties during the black powder season. The next two proposals, proposal H6 and H7, involve squirrels and raccoons. 
H6 will allow for a spring gray squirrel season. It will be 14 days in duration. It'll open the second Monday in May, which is just after turkey season goes out. It will be on private land only, and there'll be a daily limit of eight squirrels. Our biological staff has examined the season. This is an appropriate time biologically to harvest squirrels. Uh, it is similar to the same time as we harvest squirrels in the fall in terms of the squirrels reproductive cycles. So this is an opportunity to get a little bit of squirrel hunting in uh, in late May before it gets too hot. The second proposal is about raccoons and this H7 will consolidate the raccoon and opossum hunting regulations into one rule and it'll remove the restriction on hunting raccoons during the daylight hours west of US 1. There's really no biological reason uh, to, to have that restriction in place. Uh, raccoon populations are well established across the state and an opening opportunity for daylight hour hunting is perfectly uh, sound biological. Proposal 8 revolves tagging of fur bearing species and specifically the CITES tags that are required for certain species, otters and bobcats. It'll remove the fee that is currently charged for otters and bobcats uh, upon the request of a tag from the commission. Uh, it sets limits on how many tags may be requested per request, um, and it changes the placement of rule text that states how foxes should be tagged and their carcasses or pelts lawfully tagged and sold to another. It moves it to another rule. Those are the wildlife management proposals. Good evening. I'm Brian McRae with the Land and Water Access Division. And today I'll be talking about the proposed changes for game lands and bear sanctuaries for the 2022-2023 season. These proposals begin with G1. G1 will make temporary changes to 10D.0103 permanent and move specific game lands to their own rules. G2 will update NCAC language to include Sundays between season transitions as an allowable day to hunt and make it consistent with the adopted rule of change allowing Sunday hunting on Buffalo Cove and South Mountains game land. G3 will prohibit alcohol and fires on the Lutes Track and Wilson Creek portions of Pisgah game lands. G4 will remove language regarding entry into posted waterfowl impoundments and clarify the use and construction of permanent hunting blinds on Johns River game land. G5 will prohibit target shooting on Buffalo Cove, DuPont State Forest, Green River, South Mountains, John River, and Pisgah WRC game lands. G6 will add a 2300 acre property in Wilkes and Caldwell counties owned by the North Carolina Department of Agriculture to the game lands program. Name this property Kings Creek game land, establish this game land as a six day per week area, establish the Western Deer Zone season, Establish an introductory either sex season. G7 will restrict camping at designated camping areas on South Mountains game land to September 1 through the last day of February and March 31 through May 14 and limit the maximum number of consecutive days stayed at a designated campsite to 14 days. G8 will allow hunting and trapping on John's River Waterfowl Refuge. G9 will add a scouting only zone at the Spring Creek impoundment on Goose Creek game land and limit all activities at this impoundment except waterfowl hunting and trapping to within this area during the period of November 1 through March 15. G10 will clarify that any organized activities or events at commission owned or managed building access areas will require a permit. G11 will clarify that fishing is the only allowable use of a public fishing areas unless otherwise posted. G12 will create a designated camping area on Jordan game land to allow hunter camping during the open hunting seasons. Camping will be restricted to September 1, the last day of February and March 31 through May 14. Our last proposal this evening is G13, which will allow permit hunt opportunities on Panther Town, Bonus Defeat, Pisgah and Standing Indian Bear Sanctuaries in the Mountain Bear Management Unit. Thank you and that is our proposals for this evening. Darren Barnes program manager of the Office of Wildlife Interactions and Regulated Activity Permits. Today I'll be covering the proposed changes to regulated activities regulations. The following changes to regulated activities regulations are proposed by the North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission and are offered for your comments, opinions, and suggestions. R1 clarifies that nine banded armadillos cannot be rehabilitated 
an upland game bird egg rehabilitation is prohibited. Our justification is that nine banded armadillos are a non-native species to North Carolina and prohibiting their rehabilitation puts them in line with other non-native species that are prohibited to be rehabilitated. Rehabilitation of eggs is not considered appropriate as chicks hatched in captivity will likely become imprinted to humans, making them challenging to release back into the wild. R2 makes collection licenses, captivity licenses, dealer licenses, possession permits, exportation or importation permits, trophy wildlife sale permits, endangered species permits, and field trial permits non-refundable. It makes both the unified sportsman and lifetime sportsman licenses half off for individuals ages 50 to 69. It adds controlled hunting preserve rabbit operator licenses for $25. Our justification is that the license and permits fees help defer the cost of processing applications and conducting license and permit inspections. It is important the Commission retain these fees regardless of circumstances, which may include denial of an application or failure of the applicant to complete the application process. Legislation was passed at the General Assembly in September of 2021, making adult resident lifetime sportsmen and resident adult lifetime unified sportsmen coastal recreation fishing licenses half off for individuals age 50 to 69 and added the controlled hunting preserve operator license for rabbits for a fee of $25. Thank you for everyone for participating in this important rulemaking process. We look forward to compiling your comments so that we can make the best decisions on how we regulate wildlife resources in North Carolina as we've done since 1947. As we celebrate 75 years of conservation of our state's wildlife resources in 2022, we look forward to getting outdoors and enjoying wildlife associated recreation. Please stay safe and be well. Thank you.